Um, so I uh, call this hearing to order, and I want to thank our witnesses uh, for appearing today on our committee's second hearing regarding the implementation of the Health Care Small Business Health Options Program, which we all know is the SHOPS program. The SHOPS are marketplaces established by President Obama's health care law and are intended to assist certain small businesses in shopping for comparing and enrolling in health insurance plans for their employees. The administration promised that shop exchanges would simplify the process of obtaining insurance, expand health insurance coverage options for small business, increase small business purchasing power to lower costs, and put consumers in charge of their health care. Unfortunately, the reality of the program is far less than promised. Despite spending vast amounts of time and taxpayer dollars regarding these shops, the program continues to be beset by operational delays and other problems that have undermined their utility as a tool for small business. These problems include the inability to utilize web-based portals, limited choice of plans, and a lack of insurance carrier participation in the shops. The committee has sent multiple letters to then Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius and Administrator of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Marilyn Travener, to express our concerns about the seemingly endless problems besetting this program and to get answers about small business participation rates. Unfortunately, the answers have not been provided. Specifically, in January of this year, Chairman Graves sent a letter to the department requesting enrollment figures for the shop exchanges. This inquiry was followed by another letter in June. To date, the responses the department has provided have not included information on the data on shop enrollment. In addition, last year the committee commissioned the Government Accountability Office to undertake an examination of the department's implementation of the shop exchanges. This report found a number of challenges the department would need to overcome in order to make the shops operational by the department's original October 1, 2013 deadline. It appears these warnings were not heeded and the predictions of problems were accurate. For, mall, for small businesses, the lack of operational shop exchanges is one in a long list of disappointments and challenges they face in the wake of the health care law's implementation. Small businesses also face canceled health insurance plans, higher premiums, higher deductibles, smaller provider networks, more paperwork, and onerous reporting requirements, all the result of this misguided health law. Today, I hope we will hear some answers about what small businesses can expect of the shops and when the health care law will start working for them. Uh, Ms. Hahn's not here, so we'll... Um, let her make her opening statement when she arrives, but we'll roll into the uh, uh, testimony of our of our witnesses. Uh, first of all, to explain the uh, the lights, the lights will be uh, green as you're speaking. You have five minutes to deliver your testimony. You'll see them turn yellow and then red. Uh, we won't adhere completely to that, but uh, uh, that's how the lights work. Um, so now that Ms. Hahn is here, why don't we roll, we'll delay your testimony just a moment and, and let her set up and uh, uh, have her deliver her opening statement. Sorry that we went without you, but with the tight time schedule, we... Oh, everyone that was here gave consent. <laughs> Okay. Thank and I'll you. turn it over to Ms. Hahn for her opening statement. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Great to be here. Uh, my opening statement is, in 2010, Congress made history with the passage of the Affordable Care Act. And while this law is not perfect, it has benefited families across the country. Families no longer find themselves at the mercy of insurance companies. People with pre-existing conditions can no longer be denied coverage. And this year, millions of Americans signed up for health care coverage through the healthcare.gov website. And the uninsured rate has dipped to the lowest level in over a decade. But the Affordable Care Act hasn't just helped families, it has helped small businesses also. And while 96% of small businesses are not required 
under the ACA to purchase coverage. Those that choose to are seeing more options and more savings. For years, small businesses in every sector have struggled with the rising cost of health care. In fact, in a study by the, the National Federation of Independent Business, small business owners cited health insurance costs as the number one problem facing their business in 2012. Because of the Affordable Care Act, we are beginning to make some progress. In the period since the enactment of the health care law, we have seen the slowest health care price growth in almost 50 years. Employer premiums are now growing at less than half the rate of the previous decade. Small businesses in particular are seeing benefits. Before the Affordable Care Act, small businesses paid 18 percent more in premiums than their larger competitors for the same benefits. They could see their premiums increase dramatically if an employee had an accident or was diagnosed with a serious illness. Small businesses could be charged more for employing women or people with pre-existing conditions or for operating in blue-collar industries like construction or roofing. Now for the first time, small businesses have an opportunity to leverage their buying power with other small businesses in the shop marketplace. The businesses enrolled in the new marketplaces are finding quality, affordable coverage, and many qualify for a tax credit that can cut their premiums uh, by as much as 50 percent. 360,000 small businesses have already used the Small Business Health Care Tax Credit available through the shop exchanges to help them afford health insurance for 2 million American workers. Take Lorenzo Harris, for example. Lorenzo Harris is the CEO of Janico Building Services, a full-service janitorial company with 40 employees in California. This year, he transferred Janico's full-time employees from their existing health plan to California's shop exchange and saw his premium cost go down by 30 percent. He also qualified for a health care tax credit of more than $1,000. This is great news, and I expect we are going to hear even more success stories like this, particularly from California, as the shops enter their second year in business. Now, I know the Affordable Care Act isn't perfect. And I expect today that we are going to hear both about some of the successes of ACA as well as some of the criticism of the health care laws implementation. This should prompt us in Congress to fix the areas that need improvement. Medicare was passed nearly 50 years ago, and we are still making improvements and refinements to that law. That doesn't mean Medicare was a bad law. It means the job of Congress is to preserve what works and fix what doesn't. I'm looking forward to hearing the testimony of our witnesses today and uh, the opportunity to learn more about how we can work together uh, to ensure that our small businesses have access to quality, affordable health care options. And I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Hahn. Uh, I'd li now like to introduce our first witness, Myra Alvarez, who serves as the director of the State Exchange Group at the Center for Consumer Information and Oversight at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Prior to assuming her current position, Ms. Alvarez also served as Associate Director of the Office of Minority Health at the Department of Health and Human Services. She has served on the staffs of Senator Richard Durbin, former Congresswoman Hilda Solis, and then Senator Barack Obama. Ms. Alvarez, thank you for appearing today, and you may now deliver your testimony. Good afternoon, Chairman Collins, Ranking Member Hahn, and members of the subcommittee. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss the benefits of the Small Business Health Options Program for small businesses and their employees. Since last fall, SHOP has been working to provide small employers a new way to shop for health insurance coverage, and we look forward to offering even more with the addition of online functionality this fall. In the past, although many small employers have wanted to offer health benefits to their employees, they have faced many challenges. Historically, small businesses have been charged 10 to 18 percent more than large employers for the same benefits. Small businesses employing women or workers with high-cost illnesses have faced higher premiums. Because small firms have fewer employees to pool than larger firms, premiums often vary dramatically from year to year due to changes in just one or two workers' health status or because of small changes in the ratio of male to female employees. Because the law limits the factors insurers can use in determining the cost of premiums, 
small businesses can now count on more predictable rates. And many qualified small employers purchasing coverage through SHOP can receive further help keeping costs down through the availability of the Small Business Health Care Tax Credit. The SHOP provides a streamlined way for small businesses to offer health coverage to their employees. Similar to the individual marketplaces, the SHOP allows small businesses to easily compare and select plans that best meet the needs of their employees. In 2014, the SHOP opened to small employers with 50 or fewer employees. In 2016, the program will be open to businesses with up to 100 employees. Unlike the individual marketplace, eligible employers can begin participating in the SHOP at any time and may purchase coverage for their employees at any time during the year. They are not limited to a single open enrollment period. This past year, small employers offered coverage to their employees through the SHOP marketplace by enrolling in coverage through an agent, broker, or issuer. During this year, HHS has worked to create a seamless online experience for enrollment through SHOP, and we have added key new features for the SHOP marketplace for the 2015 plan year. New features include offering many employees a choice of health plans, enabling employers to write just one check regardless of the number of plans that employees choose, a feature that's generally referred to as premium aggregation, and a dedicated online system for agents and brokers to assist their shop small business clients. Starting this fall, the online federally facilitated shop marketplace will offer new health coverage options to small employers and make it easier for them to shop for select and offer employees high quality health plans. And employees will be able to enroll in their employer plan online, helping reduce an administrative burden for their employers. As we move to make online functionality for the shop available this November, CMS is committed to acting on lessons learned and continuously improving the user experience. One way that we're doing this is to give small employers, as well as agents and brokers in five states, the opportunity to experience key features of the new online shop marketplace in advance of the full launch nationwide. During shop early access, small employers in these states will be able to establish a marketplace account, assign an agent and broker to their account, fill out an application, obtain an eligibility determination, upload their employee roster, and then, when available in early November, browse available plans and pricing and complete the enrollment process. Early access will also allow for targeted consumer testing before the shop functions are made available online in all federally facilitated shop marketplace states. This consumer testing will add to the rigorous performance and security testing completed prior to going live. Beyond the opportunity for online enrollment, we're also making important progress in offering small business employees additional choices for their health coverage. In the past, most small employers were only able to offer a single health and dental plan for all of their employees. Now, through the employee choice option, small businesses in most states will have the option to allow employees to choose any health plan available at the coverage level selected by the employer. This provides significant benefits to both employers and employees including lessening the administrative burden on employers while allowing employees to select the plan that best fits their needs. In addition to choice, we know how important affordability is to small businesses. The law created the tax credit to help small employers of lower wage workers afford a significant contribution towards workers' premiums. Qualified small employers can receive a tax credit worth up to 50 percent of their contribution towards employees' premium costs. And since the tax credit first became available in 2010, it has provided hundreds of thousands of small businesses more than $1.5 billion in tax credits. For too long, small business owners have struggled to keep up with the ever-rising cost of providing health insurance for their employees. The shop, combined with new insurance reforms and tax credits, enables more employers to provide their employees with high-quality, affordable health coverage. I look forward to continuing to work with you to improve the health care options for America's small businesses, families, and communities. And I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Director Alvarez. Uh, at this point, I would like to yield to my colleague, Congresswoman Herrera-Butler, so she may introduce our next witness. Thank you, uh, Chairman and Ranking Member Hahn. I would like to uh, thank you for the work the subcommittee is doing. I'm excited to highlight um, what's, what is happening with the shop and to see whether or not we're meeting 
the needs of small businesses and to see what we can do about that. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, a retired physician and accomplished healthcare policy analyst from Washington State, um, Dr. Roger Stark. Dr. Stark pra practiced thoracic surgery in Washington State for 20 years and was one of the co-founders of the Open Heart Surgery Program at Overlake Hospital in Bellevue, uh, Bellevue, Washington. He graduated from the University of Nebraska College of Medicine and completed his general surgery residency in Seattle and his cardiothoracic uh, residency at the University of Utah. Currently, Dr. Stark is a healthcare policy analyst for the Washington Policy Center. He's the author of two books and numerous in depth studies on healthcare policy. We're lucky to have Dr. Stark here as a valuable resource who understands the, intric the intricacies um, of the medical system as a physician, as well as the intricacies of the Affordable Care Act as an analyst, um, specifically the workings of SHOP um, in Washington State and, and the exchanges intended for small business owners. So Dr. Stark, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for making the very long uh, trip across the country. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Chairman Collins, Ranking Member Hahn, and thank you very much, uh, Representative Herrera Butler. Officials in Washington State chose to establish a state-run health insurance exchange, including a shop marketplace. Coverage began in 2014. Only one carrier, Kaiser Permanente, offered plans and only offered those five plans in two counties in southwest Washington. Although 4,300 small businesses created online accounts, only 11 companies with a total of 40 people actually purchased insurance on the shop exchange this year. A second insurance company, Moda, has applied to offer 14 plans statewide starting in 2015. The director of the Washington State Shop Marketplace, Catherine Bailey, stated that many of the carriers were not interested in expending additional resources to be in the small business exchange right away. The Government Accountability Office has speculated that the use of tax credits and the shop enrollment are so low nationally for several reasons. The first reason is the complexity of doing all the paperwork. The second reason, the GAO reports, is the tax credit is not a large enough incentive for many small employers. And third, the majority of small businesses have never offered health benefits to employees. In addition, insurance companies are seeing a drop-off in employer-sponsored health insurance for small businesses. The CEO of WellPoint, Joseph Swedish, is on record earlier this month stating that small employers are shifting employees to the individual exchange or are dropping coverage completely. From a policy standpoint, although the employer mandate is a critical part of the ACA, the shop marketplace for small businesses seems to be almost an afterthought in the law. There is no clear evidence of interest on the part of small companies to provide health insurance through a marketplace with tax credits. Small businesses are typically startup or low margin companies where the added cost of employee health insurance can mean the difference between success and failure. The paperwork and regulatory burden in the shop exchange are definite hurdles for small business employers. There is no real free market in the individual exchanges or in shop. Proponents will claim that competition exists, yet all insurance plans offered in the exchanges must contain the 10 government-mandated essential benefits. Insurance premium prices must be approved by the government. Consequently, individuals and employers only have government-approved plans and not meaningful choices or real competition. Narrow provider networks further limit choices. The incentive of tax credits has not been significant enough to encourage employers to use SHOP. Obtaining the credit is so complicated that small businesses are unwilling or unable to spend the time and effort to complete the necessary forms. The SHOP marketplace duplicates the private insurance marketplace with an added burden to taxpayers. Private association pl health plans, for example, have flourished for years without government financial support. Since employer interest and utilization of the tax credit is so small, the benefits of the shop marketplace are unclear. So where to go from here? Designing an insurance exchange, whether it's private or government run, offers each state, like Washington State, the opportunity to reform health care delivery by starting with a clean slate and moving toward a patient-oriented, consumer-driven system. 
the exchange can be a transparent, information-based market where individuals and small businesses can select the plan most appropriate to their needs. Done right, the exchange should be easy to use and should promote decreased health care costs. Insurance rates and benefit levels should be set by the insurance market and not by government regulations. Washington State has 57 benefit and provider mandates that overlap the Federal benefits. Ideally, an exchange should be able to offer an array of mandate-free or mandate-light insurance plans that satisfy market needs. Exchanges should not replace existing programs that work, such as association health plans. Any subsidies in the exchange should flow to and be controlled by the patient. Tax credits or premium supports to purchase health insurance could also be offered in an exchange. Each state should be able to function as a laboratory to design the most efficient, cost-effective exchange for small businesses and individuals with real choices and competition. Thank you very much. I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Dr. Stark. Our next witness is Adam Beck. Uh, Mr. Beck serves as Assistant Professor of Health Insurance at the American College of Financial Services. Prior to his current position, he practiced law in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Mr. Beck, thank you for appearing today, and you may now deliver your testimony. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Hahn, members of the subcommittee, for the opportunity to appear before the subcommittee today. Small businesses and the people who work for them combine they, can, uh, they combine together uh, to constitute the backbone of the American economy. Health insurance is a tremendously valuable and often life-saving financial product, which our tax code affords special status. And therefore, it is an important and essential goal to allow small business owners the opportunity to offer quality, affordable health insurance coverage to their employees. The Small Business Health Options Program, or Shop Marketplace, was designed by the 111th Congress to lower costs for small business, increase competition, and therefore choice for business owners, and simplify the process of offering health coverage. These are laudable goals. However, it is my opinion that the shop marketplace, as it is currently structured and presented, falls short of these goals. I believe that the shop marketplace will remain inadequate and continue to enroll relatively few companies, so long as three factors remain the existing tax incentives, the lack of engagement of agents and brokers, and shortcomings in information technology infrastructure. First, the tax incentives are too small, or indeed for most small employers, non-existent. Without substantial and long-term tax credits, the cost of plans through the shop exchange has been, for most employers, similar to the cost outside of shop and prior to the implementation of the Affordable Care Act. While most small employers have the desire to offer health coverage, the costs, both direct and opportunity, have been prohibitive for many. The Small Business Health Care Tax Credit created by the ACA does nothing to alleviate the cost burden for most employers. It is a complicated tax credit that is available only to a select number of very small businesses, with few qualifying for the full 50 percent credit, and even then they are only able to claim it for two years. The Government Accountability Office estimates that up to 4 million small businesses could qualify for the credit, but this requires that the small business know about the credit and go through the difficult process of determining eligibility. Further, even by the GAO's own admission, advocacy groups identify that 4 million figure as the likely high point of potentially eligible businesses, with some estimating that as few as 1.4 million employers would qualify. Data from the first year of the tax credit in 2010 indicate that the overwhelming majority of employers who were eligible for any credit were not eligible for the full credit. Only 17 percent, in fact, were eligible for that full credit. The greatest obstacle, according to the GAO analysis, was the annual wage requirement. In the first year, 68 percent of businesses who received less than the full credit would have qualified for the maximum percentage based on the number of full-time equivalent employees, but failed to qualify based on their wages. Second, the shop marketplace has not sufficiently engaged or compensated the agents or brokers who are so often the conduit to the small business community. Many brokers have encouraged their small group clients to consider purchasing plans off the shop exchange because it requires about half the time of the broker and the compensation structure is the same whether the plan is on or off shop. 
States have required trainings of brokers to be shop certified that many brokers have reported to be unhelpful and inaccurate. Overall, the shop exchange has been very poorly marketed to both businesses and brokers alike. Third, and hopefully most obviously, the delay by the administration of the federally facilitated shop marketplace and the accompanying website limited the ability of small businesses in the 32 states relying on the federal marketplace. But it also created confusion for business owners, brokers, and navigators in the states that had functioning shops. Additionally, states that were operating their own shop exchanges in 2014 experienced IT problems of their own that hindered enrollment. I would compare the existing shop marketplace to a new restaurant that, despite offering some very good entrees, is struggling because of a poor location, minimal advertising, and prices that for many are simply too high. It has much potential, but it needs much to change in order for that potential to be realized. Small businesses want to offer health coverage. It simply needs to be more affordable, simpler, and facilitated by an experienced insurance broker. The Small Business Health Options Program has the potential to offer just that, but marketing, tax credits, information technology, and the agent broker involvement need to be dramatically increased in order for the program to achieve wider popularity and demonstrate markers of success. I thank you for the opportunity to testify, and I look forward to your questions. And thank you, Mr. Beck. I'll now yield to Ranking Member Hahn so she can introduce our next witness. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's my pleasure to introduce John Gable, uh, the Senior Fellow at the National Opinion Research Center at the University of Chicago. He has more than 35 years of experience and is a nationally recognized expert on the private health insurance and has authored more than 135 articles in scholarly journals. He is also an adjunct professor at the George Washington University in the Health Policy Department. He received uh, an MA in economics from Arizona State University and an AB in economics from the College of William and Mary. Welcome, Mr. Gable. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Graves, Ranking Member Hahn, members of the committee. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity to discuss the promise and challenges of Small Business Health Options Program, or SHOP. I'm John Gable, Senior Fellow at NORC at the University of Chicago. Uh, NORC is an independent, nonprofit, nonpartisan research organization whose mission is to conduct objective research in the public interest. The views I express are mine and not those of NORC. NORC. Today I'll discuss factors promoting and inhibiting the success of shops. Now, let me, given the time, I want to start off with the, going through some graphics. So first, if you can turn to page four, the, uh, what I want to point out, this is data from the Kaiser Family Foundation, that we are going through a period of price stability according to the Kaiser Foundation survey. In fact, last year there was actually a decline in premiums. Now, just a brief history of shops and purchasing pools. Exchanges are not a new idea. Over the last 25 years, states attempted to build what uh, was termed health insurance pur purchasing co-ops, HIPICs, but none enjoyed widespread success. Among the states to build HIPICs were California, Connecticut, Washington, Florida, Kansas, Colorado, and Kentucky. Connecticut got an 8 percent market share and that was considered successful. Massachusetts invested more than a million dollars in research and marketing 2012-2013, and enrollment is less than 10,000. I'm going to allude later, later to the lessons learned of these earlier HIPICs, but just note that the authors of the ACA addressed many of these earlier shortcomings of the, of the HIPICs. Now, if you will, re, if you will turn... Uh, now to number four, which is on page nine. This is a study we did for Sasaya. Here we compare the price of plans sold on the shop compared to those sold off the shop by the same metal tier. And what you see is the plans on the shop are lower cost than those on the shop. 
This may be due to narrow networks. This could be due to more non-essential benefits. But in any case, the costs are lower on the shop. If shops are to succeed where HIPICs fail, they must demonstrate added value over the traditional market. Shops can offer lower prices, tax credits, not available off the shops, wider employee choice, and a defined contribution that reduces the risk of future price increases. The authors of the ACA wrote into, le into legislation provisions that would address major problems of earlier HIPICs. Specifically, they, uh, they made inside and outside the market pay by the same underwriting rules. Administratively, Sasayo has, has tied large carriers to participate in the shops. The promise of shops is they operate under fair market rules. Prices on the shops are lower than off the shop. Lower prices are attributable to maybe narrow networks. But for employers seeking lower premiums, shops are the place to shop. Multiple carriers are participating in the shops in all but one state. With the employee choice model, employees can choose from multiple carriers and in some multiple tiers. Carriers on the competitive fringe of the small employer market, as well as nonprofit vertical integrated organizations such as Kaiser Permanente see shops as a way to build their market share. If shops and fully insured plans are to survive, they must stand off threats by other insurance systems such as self-insurance. To paraphrase Lincoln, a house divided cannot stand. Two insurance systems, one risk-rated and the other not, will lead to a system with disproportionate share of bad risk, one with favorable and one with favorable risk. Such a system will live to the demise of the non-risk-rated system. I want to close with an observation from nearly 40 years of research. Many times I have written, why are we making, may I proceed? I, <coughs> many times I have written, why are we making such a big deal out of HMOs, PBOs, HRAs, and HSAs? There's, they have only X percent enrollment. Why are we giving them so much intention, attention? All in due time became prominent insurance products, but it required many years of growth. So to paraphrase John Lennon, give shops a chance. I would be delighted to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Here's what we're going to do, because our first vote series really doesn't end in nine minutes like that says. Always we have an extra ten, and I'd like... Uh, in deference to uh, Congresswoman Herrera Butler, allow her to ask her questions, <clears throat> at which point we will adjourn for about 20 minutes. There's only two votes, and then Ms. Hahn and I will come back and continue. So I yield to Ms. Herrera Butler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <laughs> I, I, have, I have a few different questions and thoughts. Um, I, I understand, um, Mr. Gable, what you were talking about in terms of giving things a chance. Um, I think some of the challenges that we're seeing um, in Washington State um, may allude to a bigger problem. And, you know, a I, I, little bit of background for folks. Washington State has called uh, successful its, implementation, its implementation of ACA um, based on the number of individuals it's added to the Medicaid state roles. And regardless of whether or not you believe shifting from the private market to the Medicaid market is success or not, that's a separate issue. On, on the shop-specific exchange, I'm gravely concerned because we do have association health plans. We do have some other options for those small businesses who want to offer insurance. Um, but those are being, um, I think the, the screws are being tightened on those in favor of the shops, yet there is only one insurance provider in Washington State that par partakes of the shop. And in, in actually, it's only in um, two of the 39 counties. Next year, it, there will be one for all of the counties, and then those two counties may have a second option. But that's still... That, that's, that's a major, major challenge um, because, as you noted, premiums increasing, these small business owners don't have a lot of options except for push people into the individual market. Um, 
so I guess my first my first question I I'd like Dr. Dr. Stark to speak to, as you mentioned, the shop exchanges were supposed to provide these business owners with choice, and that was going to push down the prices. Um, what are you? I mean, in my view, we have this has failed. <laughs> the shop has failed. But what are you hearing from small businesses? Are you hearing hopefulness? Um, am I being too critical? Um, what are you're, you're working with a lot of these folks? Yeah, I don't believe you're being too critical, Congresswoman. Um, our two big business associations in the state of Washington are the Association of Washington Businesses, AWB, and the um, NFIB chapter there in Washington. And both of those organizations are in a, a watch and wait mode. Um, I think the individual employers are looking to see uh, will shop expand, will there be choices, will there be competition in the shop in the state of Washington. Um, as it is now, uh, as, as you alluded to, association health plans are very popular in the state of Washington. Uh, the screws are being tightened on those. The qualifications are being tightened. And a lot of business owners are very fearful that those are going to go away and they will be left with, with either putting their employees in shop or in the individual market. So there is a lot of concern on the part of uh, small employers in the state. What do you think if... if if the association plans are on their way out, um, and we've even for next year we don't really have much of uh, uh, we don't have much choice for the small businesses. What do you think is going to start to happen? Um, what have you seen numbers wise in terms of whether they're offering coverage, not offering coverage, or just closing down? Where are they supposed we, to go? <laughs> well, we have three major employers in the individual market, or three major carriers in the individual market um, in the state of Washington, and so far none of those three have opted uh, or elected to participate in shop, and we don't see them participating. Certainly in 2015, it's doubtful 2016, 2017, they're going to have a product available for shop. So I think employers are going to be looking at at either doing away with coverage or and putting individuals, uh, their employees in the individual exchange or the individual market. Uh, uh, and I, I think that's probably the biggest option that they're going to, or, or, or getting out of the health insurance business completely. Do you think that this is going to make it, um, you, so one of the things I heard, I think, from Mr. Gable and from uh, Con uh, Ranking Member Hahn, <laughs> got to remember his titles, um, is that you know, the marketing could be a piece of this. It is my understanding that for the shop exchange, we've, the, the, the state has had about $1.4 million to market. And I think your numbers were 11 employers with 40 employees. Yes. How much would it take? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not a marketing person, so I, I really don't understand. I know our, our exchange, our state exchange, has been marketed fairly heavily, especially in the Medicaid population. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been very successful at signing up Medicaid patients, but I am not aware of any big organized campaign on the shop aspect of, of the exchange. So, so I wonder if that means that the part of the goal is just to get folks, and my time is, my time is up, um, to get them out of group markets altogether. Um, but that's just for thought. Well, we'll with that, I'll, I'll yield back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, what we're going to do is adjourn for about 15-ish minutes, maybe 20. We'll go and cast this vote, and then uh, the second vote comes up. Ms. Hahn and I could quickly vote and be back up here. I apologize for that, but it happens uh, more than not, and it's outside of our control. So with that, we'll adjourn for about 15 or 20 minutes, and then uh, we'll be back. I call the uh, hearing back to order, and uh, so we'll kind of jump into questions, and uh, you know I'll ask some, and then uh, leave it to Ms. Hahn to ask a few, and then I may have some follow up, and she may have some follow up. So, um, since uh, this is a crazy day, uh, I think we'll take it from there. So I guess you know, let me start with you, Director Alvarez. Um, we have been trying very hard to get the the hard data numbers from from your group on how many businesses have signed up for the shop, uh, maybe the state exchanges and the federal, and how many are in there. Is, and we haven't been successful. Is that data available yet? Do you have those numbers? And, and if not, when might we see it? 
So just to provide some context, in 2014, small businesses had the opportunity to apply for covers through the SHOP program via paper application, utilizing an agent and broker, or directly through issuers. As a result of that, we are not the source of information as far as SHOP enrollment. CMS is not. We are working with issuers to get that information so that we can better understand the number of small businesses that enrolled in coverage through SHOP. And as soon as we get that information, we will share it with you, as well as with the American public. Is the same true of the state exchanges? Were they all paper-based, or do we have data from the, what is it, is it 18 states that are providing their own? There, so do we have data from them? It, it really does vary depending on the state. Um, some of them are working directly with issuers because, because they had a more manual process, while others are able to send numbers. As soon as we have a more accurate picture of what the enrollment in shop looked like, we'll definitely give you that information. I mean, there's a sign in my office, people actually take pictures of it, and God we trust, all others bring data. It, it's the data that will tell the story. So to some extent now, we're all supposing, uh, in, in, in doing that, there's always a bias. The data takes the bias out of it. So I would encourage, uh, certainly as you now move into the electronic piece and you're going to be rolling out your, uh, uh, you know, across, what is it, five states, kind of an early enrollment yep. piece. Um, you know, my, my concern has been, and I own a number of small businesses, is uh, I sometimes think of the shop exchange as a solution looking for a problem. Because the chambers of commerce across the United States did a marvelous job providing small businesses with health insurance, sole proprietorships and others. In fact, some would argue half the memberships at chambers of commerce signed up for the health insurance. And now that they're, they're no longer in that, um, you know, I, I just, you know, Ms. Alvarez, what, what would you say to those like me who would say we, we had a, a, uh, an opportunity through the Chambers of Commerce and whatever, it was working well, and now we're into the shop exchanges. What's any comments there? Definitely. And it's, it's important to consider that when we speak to small business owners, when, when I've talked to folks across the country, they want to provide coverage to their employees. They want the opportunity to give this as a benefit. And what, we're, what we know is that we want to provide that opportunity through the SHOP program. And when we talk about pri pri previous plans that were available to small businesses, um, we have to really talk about the quality of the coverage that small businesses had access to and the risky environment that they were operating in. You know, if one person got sick, premiums would go up. It, sometimes if they w needed hospitalization or treatment, it wasn't covered because it wasn't part of the defined package of services. What the Affordable Care Act is doing is providing access to health insurance coverage that's high quality, that provides a package of essential health benefits that's going to be there when you need insurance the most. That's the that's the reasoning behind ensuring that small businesses have access to these types of plans so that they know that their coverage will be there when they need it the most. Services like preventive care, hospitalizations, emergency room care, cancer treatment, services that we want oh. and expect insurance to cover. Sure, sure. So what do you say to the patient who had a policy where their, uh, their drug treatment for cancer was provided and now they've signed on to an exchange and it's not covered anymore because they, in their formulary, took it out? Or how about the person who was going to this hospital and all of a sudden under the restrictions of the insurance in the exchange, that hospital, they can't go there anymore or their doctor's not in there. So I'm just curious because I, I think you would agree there's cases where cancer coverage has been dropped from the formularies, hospitals have been dropped, and doctors have been dropped. Isn't that an accurate statement? I don't know the specifics of what cases you're referring to, Chairman, but what I can tell you is that what the marketplace is intended to offer is options for people. Intended? So it does offer. Okay, but you stated that they get all this coverage, and I'm saying that's just not so. I've had people call up and say, I had my cancer drugs covered, but now under Obamacare, they have to provide prescription drugs, but subject to their formulary. Am I wrong? I mean... Does Obamacare require that every drug be covered under all the formularies? Not every drug. Right. So they drop the most expensive ones. Does Obamacare require that, that people can go to any hospital? No, the networks vary. Yeah, to, to some times so restrictive. How about uh, uh, if you had your doctor, you can keep it? Are all doctors in these plans? The networks vary. Yeah, in other words, it's in many cases a very bad day at the office when somebody comes home and says, 
to their spouse. We lost our hospital, we lost our doctor, and by the way, I just lost my cancer coverage. So I think it's, again, the facts mean a lot, and I know you're sugarcoating it, but, but these have been very painful times for a lot of folks. As was pointed out, small businesses that had insurance, and you are right in saying in many cases without prescription drug coverage. What I've seen is prior to Obamacare, a lot of small companies with younger employees were able to provide that affordable health care, and they did not offer prescription drug coverage. But in the younger populations, if most of your employees are under age 40, to a large extent, that, that uh, insurance was very affordable. Now, all of a sudden, they have to provide prescription drug coverage, so they lost all their insurance. So I would beg to differ when you, when you, you again, put this happy face on it. If I'm 35 years old with a young family and I have health insurance, and now because the new policy I have to have has prescription drug coverage, which my family doesn't need because antibiotics are generic. A lot of pharmacies give them away for free. Most high blood pressure is generic now. Uh, Lipitor equivalents are generic now. That, that was not a good day for folks to come home and say, I now have no insurance. I, I guess maybe Dr. Stark, I'd ask you to comment on my, that's my bias, but I've had it come firsthand if you've heard similar things. No, in the state of Washington, for example, we know at least 290,000 people lost the insurance plan they were on. Uh, we have no idea how many of those people then went into the individual uh, exchange or how many people signed up on the individual market or went without insurance. So no, it's a, it's a significant issue, uh, at least in the state of Washington, certainly nationally as well. Now, the other thing I've seen is higher deductibles. I've seen deductibles go up. So I, I guess, uh, Director, when, when you talked earlier about small businesses now are comfortable that, that you know, they're, they're not going to be penalized for having more women than men, they're not going to be penalized for having an older workforce, is that really true? Are you telling me that a, any company anywhere with uh, a, a bunch of 65-year-old employees is going to pay the same insurance as somebody with 22-year-olds? So premiums may vary, but they may vary only on a set number of factors. Age is one of them, but it's limited to three to one. Prior to the Affordable Care Act, older adults could pay 10 times more than a younger adult. So now we're limiting what that difference can be, uh, as well as geographic area and tobacco. So uh, men, women is not part of that anymore. That is correct. All right, but I know I have seen and heard where three to one's fine until they increase the individual. The, the younger, they increase the younger so that they're still getting the same on the older as opposed to keeping the younger the same. I mean, have you heard or seen of folks where the young are being penalized now? While their, still, their premiums are going up more than ever? I think it's important to consider what the health insurance market looked like before the Affordable Care Act. You saw health insurance premiums going up by double-digit increases, and no one had an understanding why. What the Affordable Care Act does now is, yes, insurance premiums can go up, but they're going up at a slower rate. In some states, they're going down. So is 20 percent a low rate? It, it varies. I, Congressman, it varies. There, there are 20 percent increases being announced all over because, well, let me again, what, what you know or may not know. Isn't it true that a lot of small businesses last year renewed their policies in October to lock in premiums last October where they weren't subject to many of the mandates, but now this October, as in in a couple of weeks, they're getting their renewals, and the renewals now compared to what they had are up 20 percent, 28 percent? And the opportunity exists to have additional options in the marketplace. That's what the marketplace has intended to do, provide small businesses choice. We have some preliminary information on 2015 rates for small businesses, and what we're finding is that there's going to be a decrease or only a modest increase in those premiums. That That's just means not so. That is just not so. That's based on the preliminary information that we have. Yeah. Um, I, so I, we're happy to share that once it is available. Once it's available. Again, I mean, you, you're... you're you're providing this without any data to support it. The data that we have supported is in New York State. Now, New York State has, is running its own exchange. All over the place, there's 18, 22, 24 percent increases for these companies. All over the place. I mean, that's, that, that's hard data. I mean, that's published data. So again, I'm just pointing out, in my opinion, and we can agree to disagree, 
this whole shop experience is a solution looking for a problem. That, that, that be small businesses that wanted to provide coverage were providing it and granted in many cases perhaps not with prescription drug coverage but that made it affordable. Now the easy thing for a lot of small businesses is just push people out, cancel it, and, and to some extent say, you know, go into the individual exchange. Um, you know, Mr. Beck, I just wonder if what experience, I'm sharing some of mine, I'm just wondering if you have any similar. Well, the experience that I've seen uh, speaking with independent agents and brokers from across the country is that a lot of them are concerned that they will lose their, their small group clients. I think from a policy uh, perspective, the, the question then becomes, is that such a bad thing for the marketplace or for the employees if they uh, had previously had small group coverage and now are um, encouraged or even incentivized through their payroll um, to then go on to the individual exchange uh, where they can uh, statistically they would have a likelihood of qualifying uh, for tax credits. But I do definitely hear from agents and brokers that um, small, small group clients are nervous. Um, I think a lot of the early renewals um, had to do with uncertainty as much as they had to do with concerns about having to cover the 10 essential health benefits. Um, but uh, whether it is because of the shop exchange or simply despite the shop exchange, I think the nature of, of the small group market is going to change. Um, and that probably has more to do with the availability of the individual marketplace with the tax incentives than it does anything else. Thank you. I, I think I will reserve additional questions so we can uh, hear from Ms. Hahn. And also I think I saw Mr. Lukemeyer get here. so. Uh, Ms. Hahn. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And again, I think it is important to remember what uh, our health care system was like before uh, Congress passed the Affordable Care Act. It was a broken system. And unfortunately, many of those uh, folks were offering insurance plans that were bad. They were bad plans. They, they did not cover uh, what what was needed. Uh, many times you think you are young and you don't need uh, certain prescription drugs or certain coverage, and you don't know what is going to happen. That is why it's, it is it's an insurance plan. Uh, I don't think any of us can foretell uh, what uh, is going to happen to us, but we know a lot of people were wiped out financially in this, in this country, many small businesses, because of a couple of catastrophic illnesses. Uh, uh, bad accidents, uh, unforeseen health challenges. And that is what Congress was attempting to fix with the Affordable Care Act. And uh, we know that uh, now a lot of individuals, uh, even who work for small businesses, have the choice uh, to get insurance. It doesn't, uh, your insurance doesn't matter uh, who your employer is. I, I was one of those whose uh, insurance was tied to, to my employer. And uh, when I was laid off by a, a financial uh, investment banking company, my only option was COBRA. And you want to talk about high premiums. Uh, I was a single mother at the time with three kids. It was impossible for me to pay that. So we, and, and being a woman uh, was a preexisting condition. And I know the, the, the uh, communities I represent, um, you know, children have a higher instance of, of asthma uh, because we, we live near uh, big polluters uh, in, in, uh, in Southern California. And many of those families could not get insurance uh, because their kids already had a preexisting condition. So let's try to remember how bad our health care system was in this country. It was very much broken. And uh, uh, the Affordable Care Act was an, was, is an attempt uh, to remedy that. Now, if there are places where we can do better, you know, we should work together and, and, and try to do that. Uh, but certainly uh, wiping it away and going to be, back to what we had uh, is really not an option. And many people who have plans now that don't cover certain things, you know, those are plans that they chose. Uh, so th these are plans people actually make the choice for, and you can look at all your options, you can line them all up, see what is available, uh, see what the cost is going to be, and know. You never knew that before uh, with insurance plans. You didn't really know until you needed it whether or not it was going to be there for you. So um, one of the things, um, uh, Ms. Alvarez, I was going to uh, ask, it was disturbing, Dr. Stark, to hear 
uh, you know, that some, a lot of insurance companies are not participating uh, in, in the shop, and uh, that's not good for consumers. We, we know that competition uh, does uh, drive down cost, and we know that's better. Uh, so I was going to ask you, um, what are you doing to ensure um, that insurance carriers uh, do participate? Uh, how can we do a better job? Is there something we can do here in Congress to uh, encourage uh, insurance companies to participate in the various shops and exchanges? Yeah, uh, we completely agree. We think competition does drive down costs for small businesses and individuals alike. And uh, we are encouraged by some of the preliminary information we are seeing and participation in the shops for 2015. Uh, based on this preliminary information, we do anticipate that every state will have coverage in their shop market. Um, and I do think it, it's, it's a continual improvement process. Uh, the first year had some issues. The second year, we are working on those issues and improving them, such as adding online functionality come November 15th. And that is the process of setting up this program, is ensuring that we are learning from the lessons that we experience and improving for the next year. So 2015 is going to uh, have online functionality come November 15th. We will learn valuable lessons this year and we will make it even better 2016 and 2017. Um, but yes, agree that we are looking at uh, better competition for small businesses across the country with greater participation by issuers. And, and just to follow up on that, uh, do you think that is a long enough period, the launch in October in five states uh, and then in November uh, uh, a full launch, is that enough time for us to look at this pilot launch and learn and, and make enough uh, changes if need be? Is that a long enough time? So, so just to clarify, we have done all the necessary security testing and end-to-end -end testing in order to have a nationwide launch come November 15th for an online functionality of the SHOP program. What we are doing at the end of October is providing early access to five states um, based on their market, based on on-the-ground uh, agent and broker participation and a network of small businesses to give us their feedback of what the SHOP online marketplace looks like. They will be able to upload their employee roster, fill out an application, get an eligibility determination, and be able to access that website and identify any glitches or issues that we can then turn around and address for November 15th. And coupled with that, we are reaching out to agents and brokers to ensure that they have the opportunity to access a new portal that is established for agents and brokers to, again, be able to fill out their information so small businesses can assign themselves to this agent and broker, be able to uh, monitor activity once no, uh, open enrollment begins. It is intended to identify identify any last-minute glitches or issues so that we can be ready when nationwide we launch on November 15th. Right, because we can't afford another bad rollout of, of this. Um, Mr. Gable, I just was going to, uh, in a, you, you were, looked like you wanted to respond earlier, which you're welcome to do, uh, but I know you sort of talked about some of the features, uh, like getting one bill, writing one monthly insurance uh, check, comparing plans that were positive benefits. Didn't know if you could give us uh, some more of your findings uh, that you're hearing that are, are positive benefits from uh, shop exchanges. Well, okay. Just for the record. Is your mic on? Just for the record, we studied 26 states. Washington is the only state with one carrier. Some states, like Maryland, have 10 carriers. There's too many, it's in my testimonies, too many have two carriers. But Washington is not typical. Um, and also, for the record, about 45 percent of small employers do not offer coverage. But that number is not declining. That number has stayed relatively constant over the last couple of years. So, so far, we don't see a movement towards individual exchanges. Uh, what we can say, we did a survey for the Commonwealth Fund, and it's in my testimony. We asked the small employers what you're looking for. And what we found was many of the attributes of shops are, uh, are what small employers are looking for. For example, if you'll go to page 7, um, you have about 41 percent say they want very, it's very important to have more planned choice, and then 33 34 percent say somewhat important. Ability to compare plans, 68 and 23 percent. Many, that's very important. That's, these are firms offering coverage. Uh, having a third party payer 
as a, as a go-to or to answer questions. That is very important to about uh, 40 percent, roughly. And even firms, for firms that don't offer, offer coverage, the most important item uh, basically is, well, two items, cost less than it does today. And as I showed you, the shop plans cost less than the plans off the marketplace. Um, and another one is sick employee won't increase the cost. I mean, being a small employer in the pre-ACA days was a risky business because you never knew, uh, you never knew if you are offering coverage now and all of a sudden one of your employees gets cancer and then the next thing you know, nobody wants to insure your group. Or they will give you a prohibitively high premium. So I think those are aspects that uh, which do, will appeal uh, to small employers. Now, let me just also say the history of these, this is not a new concept. Um, uh, I, it, it was health insurance purchasing pools were really thought of as the solution back in the late 80s and the 90s, and a number of states sponsored them, but nobody has succeeded. But the way the, the way the shops are organized, they have addressed some of the problems that the previous health insurance exchanges uh, faced and could not overcome. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hahn. I would like to uh, yield to uh, Mr. Lukemeyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to uh, read to you uh, a little uh, statement from uh, the, the folks that own and operate an animal hospital close to where I live. And they, in this, field, this uh, particular business has nine employees. They say, I am skeptical about whether the Affordable Care Act will help my employees in the long run. But the rollout is such a mess, it may cost me thousands of dollars extra in the first couple of years. I'm required to enroll in the SHOP program, not just an ACA-compliant program, which I really already am enrolled in, or I may stand to lose the tax credit. The problem is the laws change on a weekly basis so that even the insurance companies can't tell me what to do in advance to ensure I'll make the correct decisions. Worst case scenario is I will lose the tax credit and my employees will lose their employee-provided health care. I'm spending hours and days trying to figure out what the best route is to take, but as mentioned above, no one has the answers of what I need to do to make the best business decision. At this point, I'm planning on sticking with the plan I've recently enrolled in after hours of research by myself and my financial advisors and let the government tell me later whether it's the correct plan or not. This is the dilemma that many of our, our, my small business folks have. And so the question I have for you, Ms. Alvarez, is will the... Um, the temporary or limited tax credit be available to businesses outside the shop exchanges in a situation like this gentleman uh, due to delay online or and or when the administration starts allowing or continues to allow certain individuals to obtain the taxpayer subsidies outside the individual exchange? The tax credit is available for shop plans that are, are available through the shop marketplace. So if he shops outside it, he doesn't get it? It depends, honestly. Uh, for the State of Washington, in the first year of enrollment in the SHOP program, we actually worked with Treasury to ensure that small businesses in the State of Washington still had access to the tax credit. But one important point of clarification is that no small business with less than 50 employees is required to offer coverage to their employees. The SHOP program is intended to provide options, exactly that options for small businesses if they want to provide their employees coverage. So for this veterinary hospital, while I do not know the specifics, I would want to clarify to them that they, they are not required. But I, I would expect that, like many small business owners, they want to offer this coverage and we want to get them answers to the information that they need. So we have a dedicated shop call center to provide answers. We have many partners on the ground willing and able to answer those questions. And we are more than willing to work with you, Congressman, to get them that information. Okay, next question. HHS and IRS decided last year that employees could no longer provide tax employers, excuse me, tax employers provide tax free contributions to standalone reimbursement arrangements so the employees could purchase their own individual coverage. Um, there's a lot of employers that use this. They can't afford to pay full insurance, but they'll pay $100, $200, $300 per, per employee per month or per week, whatever their pay period is, to be able to do that. But continuous arrangement will result in $100 per employee per day penalty. And many folks are not aware of this strict fine. 
Uh, don't you think that the SHOP program should be encouraging innovation like this to be able to make uh, and, and support employers to be able to help their employees afford health insurance rather than penalize them? What the SHOP program is doing is giving options to small businesses to have access to quality, affordable coverage. What I think you are referencing is a Department of Treasury rule that right. uh, HHS I, and IRS right. together made the decision. And the understanding for the SHOP program is intended to provide those options for small businesses. Uh, before the Affordable Care Act, whatever available health plans. So with the SHOP been, program, they, pay, they can pay only part of the premium? They have to be willing to pay at least 50 percent of the cost of coverage. Okay. So if uh, they have 10 employees and they pay and the cost per employee is $300 per month and they pay $150, they are okay. Is what you are telling me? I am sorry. Say that one more time. Okay, if the cost of the program is three hundred dollars per month per employee, and they then pay one hundred and fifty bucks toward that, that's okay. The employee picks up the rest. If you're if if you're using program as the keyword for health insurance plan available through the shop program, mm -hmm. yes. What we're trying to do is incentivize small businesses from for offering. Uh, coverage to their employees, and that is done so through this tax credit. It is worth up to 50 percent of the cost of coverage for these employers that are contributing to employees' coverage. And that is mm. available. It has been available since 2010 at 35 percent. <throat> um, it is going up to, to 50 percent, and we will know more information about how many small businesses took advantage of this opportunity soon. Okay, I know the and, and published reports have got that the, uh, you know, the President has waived a lot of different businesses from having to have uh, business coverage for their employees. Can you tell me the basis for those waivers? What we have been able to do is provide flexibility to employers that may not have been ready to transition into this market. And that is what we have been doing based on feedback from businesses. Uh, that is what we are trying to do with implementation, is be able to better understand and reflect the needs of Americans uh, where, where possible with implementation of the law. Uh, through the health insurance marketplace, it was up and running in 2014, and millions of people were able to have coverage as a result of it. Today, we announced that 7.3 million people were enrolled in coverage and paid their premiums. Um, Can I ask that it. question again? Because I'm not getting an answer for it. I asked the question: On what basis were the waivers given by the president for certain businesses? It was based on our authority as uh, the assigned departments to implement the law. Okay, you were able to do it based on the authority, but what was the basis for the decision on why certain businesses got the waiver and other businesses don't get the waiver? Implementation of this complex law uh, requires a lot of stakeholder engagement and feedback, and that's what we listened to. And looking at the different provisions where we had flexibility based on our authority, we were able to do so. So the business had to come in to you and make a case that we can't afford this or it's going to bankrupt us or I can't compete anymore with my competitor or what was the basis for the decision? Sir, the conversations that the President has had and with the Secretary and leadership are uh, not ones that I am privy to. I can yeah, tell but you are you administering the program, right? I can tell you that the changes that so were made what, to the what program were some the of What were some of the businesses that were waived and why did they get those? You don't know why they were given their waivers? It was done in order to be flexible with implementation and be able to be responsive to the needs of the market. So, but you don't know the basis of the waiver? Maybe she can, knows the basis of the waiver. I can definitely get back to you with that information. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> another day at the Capitol. I, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Lukemeyer. We will now yield to Mr. Schrader. Five minutes. Uh, thank you, Schneider from Illinois. Um, oh. Thank you. It's okay. Um, I want to thank the witnesses for being here. I, I appreciate your um, input and time. Uh, you know, the Affordable Care Act uh, is often a contentious issue, uh, but I think many of us on the committee can at least agree that uh, the issue small businesses are facing, have been facing, facing in the marketplace uh, are, are difficult. Uh, cost was not the only uh, rising, was not only rising at unsustainable rates for small businesses and employees, but was also providing, uh, proving to be an efficient and an effective coverage that many of, of businesses and individuals working in those businesses were, were receiving. Both of these problems had the effect of ultimately stifling economic growth and putting businesses and individuals unnecessarily at uh, undue risk. I know um, back in the early 90s we were seeing double-digit increases routinely 
uh, in my insurance agency. Uh, the shops take steps to address these issues, uh, but clearly the implementation uh, has, has, has not been perfect. Um, I guess, uh, Director Alvarez or, or, or Dr. Stark, maybe to, to one of you, uh, Dr. Stark, in your testimony, you indicated that uh, when, when the plan was introduced, when shops plans came online, there were uh, upwards of um, a million potential businesses, but so far only 170,000 recipients uh, took the tax credit in 2011. Uh, delivery has been inefficient. Uh, with an estimate so much higher, uh, what can we do to streamline the process to make it more efficient to help these small businesses take advantage of the shop? I, I, I think there is a, a, a broader answer to your question, or maybe it, it should be a broader question, and that is what, what should the employer-employee model really look like? Uh, is the shop uh, an effective way, really, to provide the sort of health insurance that employees need? Um, first of all, it it's unclear that employers should be in the health insurance market. Uh, traditionally, they are. They have been since, uh, since the mid-1940s. Should that be the model for the country? Uh, and, and quite frankly, I don't think it, it should be. So then the, the second part of your question is, well, what can we do with shop? Well, again, if you really want to help employers, then you have to increase the competition and you have to increase choices that they are going to have in shop. And you have to get away from the 10 essential benefit mandates that really make every product sold in shop exactly the same. You have to get away from government pricing, which really limits what insurance carriers can charge. And I think that is the answer to it. Set up an exchange that is transparent, that, that offers people an array of products that they can use. Dr. Alvarez, or Director Alvarez, I am sorry. Uh, the, the biggest problem, I think, with that approach would be adverse selection and the fact that people that need more services are going to select the plans that have more services and it will be more expensive for them. And that is not leveling the playing field for Americans across the country. What the Affordable Care Act does with the essential health benefits package is intended to do just that. Insurance has to pool risk. There have to be people that are sick and people that are healthy coming together in a pool in order to balance it out and have better access to competition, which drives down costs. Um, but th that's, that's the expectation, because no one knows what is going to happen in their life, if there is going to be a car accident or a serious diagnosis, or if we are going to need prescription drug coverage sometime. Uh, we don't know. We don't know what tomorrow holds for us. And insurance should be there when we need it the most. That is so, the premise. So, Mr. Gable, I think you touched on this. You know, by definition, small businesses don't have the numbers to pool risk uh, to get the benefit of the law of lar large numbers. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, and and I believe um, I believe that you have to have a minimum benefit package because with, without a ben minimum benefit package, uh, let's say all the people who don't think they have mental health problems won't have mental health benefits, and they won't cover it. Whereas those with mental health benefits, people with mental health benefits will go in. This has happened historically. This, this will most definitely occur. I, would, I do want to say this. The average, the average plan before the ACA of a small employer was a little bit less than 0.80 or 0.79, something like that. So they had, this is not like the individual market. Before the ACA, the individual market, 50 percent of the plans did not meet the actuarial uh, 0.6 threshold. Okay. It's most, almost all the small employer plans in the country had a 0.6 uh, actuarial value before. Great. Well, thank you. I am out of time, so I will yield back. Oh, okay. Um, I guess to, to uh, finalize where we are, maybe a couple of uh, questions then. I guess, uh, Dr. or Director Alvarez, I am assuming the government has provided funding to the states, the uh, uh, however many that is, the uh, 18 or so states that are creating shop exchanges. I am assuming that is correct. Can you tell us how much uh, has been, been spent towards the shop exchanges in those 18 states? 
I don't have the specific figures in front of me, but just one point of clarification, Congressman. What we have done is give establishment grants to State-based marketplaces. We haven't given specific money for sh the establishment of a shop marketplace. Um, it is related to the establishment of the State-based marketplace. And as one of the requirements of operating a State-based marketplace is also operating a shop. Um, and so let's, let's go back to the data piece. Now, Today, uh, Administrator Trapaner did say 7.3 million folks, uh, individuals, have enrolled in health plans. Are any of those shop enrollments, or are they all on the individual side? They are all in the individual market. So we still don't have any numbers on the shop? We are working to get that information for you. Well, and, and so let me just conclude by encouraging anyone and everyone in your arena to get the data, because I know as a business guy, I can't even imagine flying blind the way we are, where we'd like to answer the question, how many businesses are taking advantage of it? How many employees are taking advantage of it? Uh, you know, what, what is the cost? And then once you've got that benchmark, you can go quarter to quarter, month to month, because on the shops they can sign up every month. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a snapshot, which we may have on the individual, that anything we could do to have that data uh, will let the taxpayers understand how their money has been spent. And without it, there is a frustration that I have and others where we are supposing things. And I think you understand that frustration. So uh, if you could just uh, let us know uh, and sooner than, than later where we are. Um, so I was just wrapping up. I don't know if you had anything else to add or not, Ms. Hahn? No, uh, just thanks. Thank Thank you to all of you for coming and uh, expressing your concerns. Um, Director Alvarez uh, really appreciated um, and was, was impressed by your knowledge of the situation um, and your um, ability to, to clarify and illuminate for us uh, what the intended purposes are of uh, the Small Business Shop Exchange. And again, I would reiterate my opening comments that um, certainly we have already found out things aren't perfect, but uh, I am dedicated to and committed to, and I hope my friends across the aisle are as well, to fixing uh, what we think needs to be fixed, because ultimately I, I think this is uh, a good uh, law and a law that uh, I think has helped, we, we already know, millions of Americans. So thank you for being here today. Um, I also would like to thank everyone for appearing and uh, just uh, concur that this health care debate is going to be continuing for some time to come. And, and the more data we have, the better the context can be. We don't have to talk over each other. Uh, you know, the, the debate should be on the data, uh, which, which then will lead us to, to see where we're going. And, and I would like to point out, though, I'm a small business owner, and I probably visit on any given week when I'm back in the district 15 or 20 small businesses. And I can tell you universally, uh, the, the biggest problem they bring up is Obamacare. The, the mandates on hours and, you know, the fact that they're cutting hours, workers' hours to 28 hours. And, you know, I, I hear this prescription benefit cost, which can be 25, 30 percent the cost of insurance, and some of these folks with young employees don't have any need for it. So what we're doing is, you know, penalizing the young and the healthy uh, in order to provide for the old and the sick. And, I understand that balance, but let's face it, the young and the healthy aren't signing up at anywhere near the percentage that, that was put out. And partly as a result, we're now seeing uh, some of the costs go up because they've got a year of data and, and the young and the healthy weren't there for it. So, May, uh, may I just add one thing? Sure. Uh, I also uh, visit uh, lots of small businesses in my district in Los Angeles. Uh, that's, I have business roundtables all the time. I make it a point to walk into. And universally, uh, the biggest uh, concern that my small businesses have uh, are not with health care, uh, but with the economy. They want more customers uh, and their access to capital. Uh, many of my small businesses, particularly my women-owned and minority-owned businesses, want to find out how they can access small business loans so that they can grow, expand, and hire uh, people. That is what I hear universally. Well, we, we could have a whole discussion about Dodd-Frank and what that's done to the economy, but th we won't be there today. 
so again, you've all provided valuable insight and uh, appreciate your attendance. I will ask unanimous consent that members and the public have five legislative days to submit supporting material into the record and hearing no objections, so ordered, the hearing is now adjourned.